out of 478 comments in the video where I asked you to take a second and go and put your comment on whether Raila should go to AU or not, I have managed to sample a hundred, first a hundred, and literally counting out of a hundred people that commented, 76 were saying Raila should remain. The reason why I was even doing it is I know very well and I was of course behind the scene that quite a number of Raila Odinga's think tank are members of this channel and they followed and so they sampled your comments. For those who had not really also given their position on this, I know that you'll also give another minute so that you tell us what you think. However now, the African Union have had a communication, have given a communication to Kenya in relation to Raila Odinga's bid. But that, as it may, Kenya Kwanzaa is slapping Raila with the new ultimatum before any, before his candidature is actually approved. But that is happening at a time when Odinga is showing mixed signals and seem to have a stand that he is not in fully for the African Union Commission chairperson race. And in a report that was filed by TV47, it details a notification from the African Union with the deadline that Kenya was given to present the name of Raila. I want you to listen to that video here. As a new coalition leader, Raila Odinga's bid for the African Union chairperson position will be formal in August this year after the African Union Commission sent notifications to countries nominating candidates for various posts to apply by the 6th of August. The 6th of May letter seen by TV47 states in part, candidatures must be received by the Commission Office of the Legal Council and delivered in sealed envelopes on or before August 6, 2024, at 17 hours Addis Ababa time. Also expected of the candidates is their CVs and a short write-up on how they plan to address Africa's most pressing issues. The notification comes in the middle of intense lobbying by Kenya to persuade Somalia to stand down her candidate, former Foreign Affairs Minister Fozia Adam, which featured during Tuesday's meeting between Deputy President Rigadi Gashagua and Somalia Prime Minister Hamza Bare, who is in the country for an official visit. Principal Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Korir Singoe, while confirming on the engagement between the two sides, said, and I quote, Somalia indicates their willingness to basically second Kenya's concerns. Now, that is a story that was compiled by TV47. So let me just do some recap about this. And so there are some questions that Kenyans have also been asking that according to that is that Kenya has been notified to present the candidature of Ray Ludinga for a specific position, a certain position. So I think it starts by the intent first, and they've been given to five to up to 6th August uh, um, 2024, 5 p.m. Uh, 5 p.m. in the evening. So by, the, by, by, the, by 5 p.m. Um, December by time, East African time, they must have fielded the candidature of Raila. And it has detailed all the other things that are needed for that candidature to be fielded. So that is two months away. And that is why the race, the discussion about this is coming up. Rai Ludinga is coming out not so much really showing detached from this position. This comes as handlers confirm Odinga is not putting his best foot forward 
for the job. And even a day after he launched scathing attack on Kenya Kwanza administration, he was attending another burial in Luo Nyanza and speaking the Luo, Odinga maintained his stand that I am going nowhere. And remember, while he's saying in public that he's going nowhere, the government is supposed to, if he's going for that position, he must keep off the local politics. So even himself and any other, even Kenya Kwanza knows that. So the message on attacking Kenya Kwanza at a time when, you know, if he had started attacking him by the time he launched his bid, things would have been different. People wouldn't have raised questions. So questions have been raised about that skating attack and his messaging that is still taking, telling the, his voting base that I am going nowhere. So it's a case where someone is planning for your journey. You are, someone is trying to put your bags, is going to get you, trying to get you a ticket, is trying to book your hotel where you're going to spend and you go there. But then you outside there, you are telling your friends and your family that I am not going anywhere. Who should you trust? Who should, who should be trusted? Is it the person packing your bags or yourself telling your friends and your relatives that you're not going anywhere? And that is why I stand by the case. Raila is not going anywhere. Remember even Kabogo, and, and not even that. Paul Mwangi, his lawyer, came out after to respond to Cher Aaron Cheriot and said that what Kenya Kwanza should know, that even many Kenyans, Kenya Kwanza should know two things, that that uh, AUC thing is not a life and death matter for Raila. Number two, Kenya Kwanza should also know that many Kenyans don't want Raila to go. So it's not a matter of life and death. And I think we've confirmed as just in the bold desk here. You can go and check that video. You will see the video I asked on your opinion, what Raila wants. It has the highest number of comments, 478. And almost 75% are saying Raila should remain here. So it's very clear, even the way Raila Odinga team were talking, both Paul Mwangi and Sefuna, the way they've been talking about Raila AUC bid a day after a scathing attack, they're a bit unbothered. And I know many people have been arguing that if Raila goes, many political careers will fall. But then our reports are emerging about some demands that Kenya Kwanza are putting in place before the August 6th when they are supposed to launch Royal Odinga's bid. Now, I've, I've asked uh, some, a, mem a serious member of this channel, um, a third general, who has also worked as a diplomat somewhere in Sudan, and he has asked me, he has told me, Kevin, what is supposed to happen is that if Kenya Kwanza wants Raila bid to go on, that immediately they receive that notification, it should not even take them two days to launch Raila's bid, to send Raila's bid. Remember, this bid has to be taken both, you have to be go there physically to take the envelope, of the papers there with the, all the CV and all the other documentations required. So you're saying, if it is launched earlier, it will actually show the seriousness and the campaigns start there. Because it seems the vectors are all aligned for Eastern Africa. So if they were interested, then immediately they get that notification because that notification arrived, I think, the day before yesterday. I think that's what is being said here. They must have done that. You're being told about Agashagua. You know, I've always said something here. This Israel Odinga's bid, much as Kenya Kwanzaa are masquerading and people parading for it, crusading for it but it's not in action do you want to tell me that that uh, Somali president was in the country Kenya Kwanza wants Somalia to drop their candidate for Raila 
not so much president, I think PM. Then Gashagua met with him somewhere to ask him to drop his candidature. And he is in the country. There is no meeting other than Raila meeting that PM. Then locally, your candidate, they said there's so much you're happening about the candidate is so detached. And even yourself is so detached on him. Let's look at these strange <laughs> demands. I've looked at them and uh, oh yes. I've looked at them and I'm just a bit amazed and I'm just wondering whether these people know what they're saying. Condition number one. Raila Ding must slow down the political activities to show commitment because this is in concurrence with the requirement of the job. Of course the job requires that you do not hold political party activity or position in the country when you are actually uh, Afri in uh, the chair of the African Union Commission. For example, one of the conditions is that Raila Odinga must resign as the ODM party leader, that position be relinquished to Kinejoho and Oparanya, so that it will show commitment that is not really taken over, that is left the party. Because this is a requirement, of course. And I'm, I'm looking at it this way. If Raila resigns as ODM party leader and decide, and that position is, rel is relinquished, I don't know what the, the ODM constitution says, even if he's supposed to do it informally and write some letter to register of political parties, that letter will be leaked in public and the narrative will gear up that Raila Odinga has given up, has left the Kenyan politics. Now, I know when Raila is saying, I will be available, does not mean he must be still a, 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 a party leader, but he can still be around. What, that nothing stops him from being around here, to, you know, doing the other things apart from the official party position. So that is the first requirement. Even though, not that that, that letter is, is, is required in a disabab of Raila Dinga resigning. No, that is not required. But Kenya Kwanza wants it. I think before we even go there, they want him to literally resign and that resignation so that they, are, they take the assurance that is not going to be. You know, and remember, of course, this is a requirement. Number two, Kenya Kwanza wants Raila Odinga to tone down on anti ruto confrontation and this is geared towards supporting the budget policies that are coming. Two things have happened. I've just seen a report uh, now that the 1.5% the housing levy is targeting the landlords. And apart from the other tax that normally pay the land rates, the landlords will be slapped by 1.5% of that income they deposit. I don't know how it's going to be affected when they deposit their money. And that, I've seen it causing uh, jitters in the corridors, that it will shoot up the cost of rent in the country. There are so many other tax proportions in the new budget that is yet to be rolled next, next month, and such other unpopular uh, tax policies that have been put there. So they will want Raila Dinga to tone down, and that is why you saw the likes of um, Ichungwa and Arun Cheriot were dispatched to talk Raila off the discussion of Ruto has failed. But Raila talked in the context of what had not been done on the disaster response. Number three. Kenya Kwanza wants to run the Raila campaign kitty themselves and keep off or rather scrap off Raila Dinga's campaign team. Why? We immediately launched his bid 
Macau Mutua and other diplomatic uh, uh, envoys revolved around Raila Odinga and he consolidated a team that would work with. But what Kenya Kwanza is saying, and, and there were two strategies by the way. Number one was to give him, to bolster funding in the office of the Prime Minister and through through the office of the funding, fund, through the funding in the office of the Prime Minister, you'll get the resources to campaign. Because apart from what Kenya Kwanza is campaigning, himself he also needs to campaign. He also move, needs to move to his African uh, press uh, friends so that he can campaign. And that has not been affected. The other one was to fund through the foreign affairs docket. And some report, I think one of the bloggers of UDA from Marsabit, of, of Kenya Kosa from Marsabit, was actually saying that uh, there was some budget for this that was rerouted to Geshak was, I don't know, this, this emergency response. But there is that rumor somewhere there. So that is also one thing that if we are going to support you, then we are not going to give you the money. We are going to run the budget. Why? This is a scheme to turn Raila to a beggar. So Raila will say, I want to go to Ethiopia. I want to go to South Africa. I'm going to meet X, Y, Z. I'm going to take X number of days, pay my ticket, do this, do this, do this. On this becomes more vulnerable. So you will understand, guys, huh? where Raila is coming from. And lastly, is to break ties with former president Uhuru Kenyatta. This is needed because they believe that so long as he still sticks with Uhuru Kenyatta, then maybe um, he's still going to be convinced to come back in the country, uh, to, to come back, make a political comeback, and still be defending some of the Uhuru era CSS that are really under attack from Kenya Kwanzaa. So if you look at these ultimatums, if, even if you are Raila, let me tell you, Wana, to Sidanganyane, Raila haizi yacha kuwa deputy party, haizi, kuwa, haizi yacha kuwa party leader wa ODM. I, I'm not just buying it. I'm, I'm not seeing it. If you look at all these things, it's, it's packaged in a manner like he's going to be turned into a beggar. And that is what I said in, uh, that is what I said, that is what I said in Bondo, that Ukiwa bembeleza, ukiwa omba omba, watakudharau, watakuona kama munta mbae ni bega. And you know, that is not him. So looking at these ultimatums, Kenya Kwanza will decide. I don't think uh, quite a number will be met. And um, it's interesting to see what will happen between now and August 6th. March are said, but more needs to be done. Let's wait and see.